Mr. Stewart, what you need to understand with regard to our organization is a faith-driven organization. This is not an organization of lawyers or those that are overly concerned with legal matters. So our primary allegiance is to Jehovah God. Now, the governing body realizes that if we were to give some direction that is not in harmony with God's Word, all of Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide who have the Bible would notice that, and they would see that it was wrong direction. What Jeffrey Jackson says here in court sounds very fine and reasonable, but is this really how it works among Jehovah's Witnesses in real life? First of all, is it considered possible for the governing body to give wrong direction? If so, what happens in that case when it is recognized? The decisions that are made by the faithful slave today are made collectively. So no one man's making these decisions. These decisions, if you want to call them a decree, are made collectively. So when that direction comes out to branch committee members or when it comes out to the congregations, if you want Jehovah's blessing on you as a, an individual or a family, certainly as a elder or a congregation, it'd be best to just ask Jehovah to help you understand it, but obey the decision. Uh, we don't want to be rebellious. Instead, we want to follow the lead of the faithful slave, be content to do that. Uh, the slave that Michael, our Lord Christ Jesus, is using today. Our loyalty is not to men, but to Jehovah's arrangement, made up of imperfect but loyal men. We can be loyal to Jehovah by being loyal to the faithful and discreet slave, the governing body. Jehovah and Jesus are using the faithful and discreet slave to feed us spiritually. So we owe our loyalty to that slave. But some may say, isn't the governing body made up of imperfect men? Yes, it is. The last perfect person to walk the earth was Jesus himself. There is no perfect person or organization on the globe. But as a longtime faithful brother used to say, this is the best imperfect organization on earth. Jesus didn't say the slave would be infallible. He said it would be faithful and discreet. The way we listen to and obey the faithful slave has a direct bearing on the strength of our friendship with God. In fact, it means our very life. But what if the governing body serves some spiritual food that is not to our liking? Or what if we do not fully understand or agree with a clarification of a belief. On one occasion, Jesus' followers, including the Apostle Peter, were confronted with a new teaching. How did most react? Notice John 6 and verse 60. It states, When they heard this, many of his disciples said, This speech is shocking. Who can listen to it? The result, continuing in verse 66, Because of this, many of his disciples went off to the things behind and would no longer walk with him. But how did Peter respond when Jesus asked them, are you too stumbled? At John 6, 68, we read, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go away to? You have sayings of everlasting life. What loyalty? Peter's loyalty was based on solid evidence that Jesus was the Messiah. His loyalty was evidence of his faith. That is the kind of loyalty we want to imitate today. There are times we must wait on Jehovah to clarify matters. In the meantime, may we prove ourselves loyal like Peter and follow closely the lead of the faithful slave who closely follow in the footsteps of their master, Jesus. But the idea that Jesus appointed the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses to serve collectively as a faithful and discreet slave to interpret the Bible for Christians is assumed and never proven. How does one know for certain that Jesus is using these men? How did Peter know that Jesus was in fact the long-promised Messiah? In the video, Ron Curzon tells us that Peter's loyalty was based on solid evidence. What evidence do we have that the governing body is being used by Jesus today? 
Without such evidence, the claim is invalid. In fact, it would be important for us to avoid following such ones. The question is, does God require us to be loyal to a human arrangement when that arrangement is out of harmony with what the Bible says? It gets back to the statement of Jeffrey Jackson at the beginning of this video, namely, that if the governing body were to give some direction that is not in harmony with God's Word, all of Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide who have the Bible would notice that, and they would see that it's wrong direction. There are numerous examples in the Bible that show that loyalty to a human organization, even one established by God, that gives direction that is not consistent with God's Word, is not what God requires. However, the Watchtower Society never highlights them as such, but use them to teach other lessons. Here is just one example. Is there a Bible character who set an example of loyalty to Jehovah over love for family? Well, how about this individual on our monitors? Jonathan, the son of King Saul. Shortly after David defeated Goliath, 1 Samuel 18 tells us that Jonathan and David became bound together in close friendship. They made a covenant because Jonathan loved David as himself. So for the rest of his life, Jonathan was loyal to David, Jehovah's chosen one. And thus, Jonathan was loyal to Jehovah. Now, as we know, in time, Jonathan's father, King Saul, was determined to kill David. So Jonathan faced a conflict of loyalties. Would he continue to put his loyalty to Jehovah ahead of his love for family? Well, we know he did. But look at the division that resulted in. Please turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 20. And let's read together verses 30 through 33. Notice the division between Jonathan and his father. 1 Samuel 20, verse 30. Then Saul became enraged with Jonathan and said to him, You son of a rebellious woman, do you think I do not know that you are choosing to side with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother? As long as the son of Jesse is alive on the earth, you and your kingship will not be firmly established. So now send someone to bring him to me, for he must die. However, Jonathan said to his Saul, his father, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? At that, Saul hurled the spear at him to strike him. So Jonathan knew that his father was determined to put David to death. Talk about family opposition. Now, few, if any of us, have experienced that type of response from unbelieving relatives. So what would Jonathan do? Would he begin to reason that he needed to now change his priorities and put love of family ahead of loyalty to Jehovah? The answer is in verse 42. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, since we have both sworn in the name of Jehovah, saying, May Jehovah be between you and me and between your offspring and my offspring forever. So loyalty to God had first place in Jonathan's heart. And he proved his loyalty to Jehovah ahead of his love for family. This whole account is seen as a lesson of how to show loyalty to God instead of family. But it completely ignores the fact that, although Saul was Jonathan's father, he was first and foremost the king of Israel, anointed by God. So in reality, Jonathan faced a choice of whether to show loyalty to God or to his appointed representative that was acting out of harmony with God's will. As said earlier, this is just one of many examples in the Bible demonstrating that God does not require obedience to the King of Israel when it is recognized that the direction he gives is in conflict with God's word. That is why it was right for Naboth to refuse to give his field to King Ahab, or why it was right for the priests to tell Uzziah that it was not his business to burn incense in the temple, even though both men were anointed kings. So, even if the governing body were able to prove that they were chosen by Jesus to rule, it would still be important for God's people to show their loyalty to God ahead of the organization.